So, everyone is playing Astartes in your local meta, except you. You're the guy that split the Indomitus box and Prionexus boxes with your one friend, and you, of course, decided to take the Undead Robot half of those releases, because, well, they're a lot cooler, let's be honest. Or maybe you're just an Egyptophile. I won't judge. Maybe, if you're lucky, you already had somewhat of a respectable Necron collection, as far as Kill Team is concerned. So, what even is a respectable Necron collection for Kill Team? And which of these things actually help you defeat the superhuman plot armor clad space marine meta that is certainly infesting your friendly local game store? If you had any doubts on how to play Necrons before Prime Nexus, you certainly have no idea where to start now. Even if you did though, you probably have been left looking at your collection of aesthetically pleasing undead robots and thinking, well, what am I supposed to do with these guys now? The answers to these questions depend on what your goals are when coming up against your friend's team of heavy intercessors or blade guard veterans or whatever flavor of marine they've decided to take on this particular day. And yes, this will matter, and we'll get to it later. For now, we need to establish a few things. Some guidelines, if you will. What game are you playing? No, I know we're playing Kill Team. What I mean is, how do you actually win? Are you and your friends playing in a format that rewards holding objectives more than killing enemy models? Or is it a format where disintegrating your friends' ultramarines is utterly imperative to having any chance of victory? The answer to these questions are vital when figuring out what Necron models you want to take against Astartes. So, is your answer to that last inquiry? Well, my friends and I have been playing missions with Hold 1, Hold 2, Hold More as the primary objectives. If so, we have a good starting point that we can build off of. First and foremost, we have to remember that no matter how strong the new Marines are, their points have been bumped from the previous changes, and they are therefore even more restricted than before to very elite-based teams. Seven models is typically going to be pushing it for your average Astartes player. They can maybe hit eight, but even limiting themselves to seven means that they're going more bare bones, stopping themselves from using all the most fancy and exciting toys that Astartes get, which most players aren't going to be doing. Expect lists with around six models on average. This is a safe assumption to make when going into a game with any given Astartes player, assuming you're playing at 125, and for what it's worth, 125 is the points level I'm operating in throughout this entire video. If you and your friends are still playing 100, I would strongly urge you to try convincing them to bump up to 125, but that's a topic for another video. Since we've established that we're playing in a hold-based meta and your marine adversaries are going to be running about six bodies on average, there are a few conclusions that we can come to. The first being that maybe we should use as many bodies as possible. If, for instance, you wanted to run all flayed ones, you would be doubling them in bodies. And well, yes, flayed one's offensive output was nerfed with the prior nexus release, their durability was not. And their points cost remained the same at 10 points apiece. Now, running all flayed ones with Novak was a viable strategy versus any team before Pariah Nexus, including Marines. And while I think all flayed ones is a viable strategy in this specific instant, instance, I no longer think Novak is the way to go. I'll explain this with some quick math hammer that I ran. A Novak flayed one after Pariah Nexus, meaning that they are rerolling all failed hit rolls but not wound rolls, is only doing 0.667 total damage to a Marine. That means that you aren't even expected to shave off one of their two wounds with a single flayed one. Now you might be thinking that this is fine. After all, that flayed one is probably half the cost of the marine it's fighting. So let's even the odds and say that two flayed ones are fighting this marine. Two flayed ones are expected to do a total of 1.334 damage to the marine. So now you're expected to take half of its wounds off, but not realistically expected to get both the vast majority of the time. And keep in mind, this is against a basic marine chassis not a heavy intercessor at toughness 5, or a blade guard vet with 3 wounds, or even a marine with a storm shield that essentially gives him a 2-up save. It would take 3 Novak flayed ones to even get to the injury roll versus a marine, at which point it's likely that it has def death denied, or a tactical reroll, or probably both, in their pocket, and you'll never, ever kill them. So, Novak clearly isn't the answer, so what is? Well, if you're running a horde of durable bodies that's sole objective is to move around the map and cap objectives while reliably scoring positional secondaries, I'd like to point you in the direction of a criminally underrated subfaction, Nefrek. You might be thinking, what does that do again? Well, Nefrek is the one that teleports you. Your horde of flayed ones will be teleporting through terrain, rerolling advance rolls at your whim. Now, not only are you holding double the amount of bodies as the marine player, but you're much faster than them as well. You can reliably rack up victory points with these durable bodies without ever having to worry about taking Marine out of action. I genuinely believe this is your best bet in the positional format, and yes, if you're so inclined, you could take a Combat or Zealot Lich Guard with 10 Flayed Ones instead of just the 12. 
so that in a pinch you have some reliable offensive output, but I don't believe it's completely necessary at the end of the day. Now, if you and your friends are playing in a format that relies on offensive output, such as hold one, hold more, kill one, you now have different priorities. The teleporting flayed one horde just isn't going to cut it here, as you're going to be missing out on a third of the primary scoring with a team like this. Usually, with the new Necron changes, the types of teams you're going to be looking at are going to end up being more elite. Outside of being back objective holders, Flayed Ones are hardly going to feature in teams for this format. You're more than likely barely going to have more bodies than the Astartes player, if at all. If you want to run multiple Lich Guard with Novak, that's actually still a perfectly viable strategy, but you're going to quickly find that some of the best lists you're coming up with have several decent shooting options that are barely benefiting from Novak. And when you run the Math Hammer for a Warscythe Lich Guard against a basic Marine chassis, you quickly find out that this unstoppable monster is getting that marine kill with or without the Novak bonus. So, with the example list I came up with, that being th three Lich Guard, two Immortals, one Flayed One, and a single Warrior's Com Specialist, I found that using either Zara Khan to benefit your team in all phases, or Mefret to help out your shooters, seeing as your Lich Guard don't really need to help that much, is a much more viable strategy. Bumping your Immortals up to AP-3 is actually really nice against a Marine, especially if you use Superior Inheritance to shoot again for a single CP. Just being able to whittle these models down from a distance can be really valuable in the matchup, while they're scrambling to deal with the Lich Guards that are slowly marching in their general direction. If you're comfortable with only running 6 models instead of 7, I also think there's a genuine chance that the new Triarch Praetorians are insanely strong, even though they don't benefit from Dynastic Codes like the rest of your team. Not only are they statistically likely to kill a Marine without any specialisms in combat, but their ability to fly, fall back and shoot, and threaten your opponent in multiple ways could be a game changer for this faction, even at the steep cost of 28 points. At the end of the day, Necrons might be the only team in the game that is harder to kill than Astartes, at least depending on the team that you're running. Use this to your advantage always. I hope this is helpful for somebody out there trying to figure out what to do with their robot zombies, and I hope the information in this video leads to at least one Astartes player questioning their choice in faction, as that would be kind of funny for me. Thank you to our patrons over at Patreon who voted for me to do a video on Necrons for this series. Please subscribe and hit the bell if you aren't already as it helps the channel massively. As always, have a good one.